Doctor! <laughs> it's the pond! Come on, hey. do Hello, pond! Come here! So, someone's been a busy boy then, eh? Did you see me? Of course. A stalker. Alert. Husband. And Rory the Roman! Oh, come oh. in! Oh, yeah. Oh. Stephen's really playing with the form of the show, and, and, and I think that he just wanted an opening 20 minutes of something that he'd written where you go, whoa, what else can happen? You know, that almost feels like a finale, um, which, you know, I, I think he's managed to pull off. And how different did it feel for you coming back now for your second series? You're no longer the new boy. <laughs> well, that felt like a relief, actually, I have to say. Um, but it was exciting being the new boy. I still kind of am the new boy, you know. It's, it's, um, there's a long way to go if I'm to cement a place in, in Doctor Who folklore, like Tom Baker and David Tennant and Patrick Troughton and, you know, people like that. So there's a lot of work to do, but I've enjoyed making this particular series. Um, I think there's been some great challenges for me as an actor. I think that Stephen's writing particularly for me now. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a thrill to work with Karen and Arthur each day, so it's been wonderful. With this opening two-parter, a lot of it, of course, filmed in the States. What kind of different feel did it give it for you? Well, I think it, it, it broadened the scale of it hugely, actually. I think it makes it feel particularly filmic, you know, because you've got locations that... that that you can't really CGI and when you actually have them as a real thing as a real entity I think it really does it does something to your mentality watching Doctor Who because you go wow that is Utah that's where Forrest Gump stopped running that's where Indiana Jones discovered the Temple of Doom you know loads of those great Spielberg movies have, have, have been done there and a lot of um, John Ford Westerns so I think it, it, it adds a sense of scale to it which for Doctor Who is always good what? A mysterious summons. You think I'm just going to go? Who sent those messages? Now, what do we have set for the rest of the season, then? What highlights? God, we've got lots of highlights. I think Hugh Bonneville in um, episode three is, is particularly brilliant. Uh, James Corden turns in a great performance. Saran Jones, um, you know, there's every week you're learning more about the fate of the Doctor and just who Riversong is to him. And um, Stephen has got twists and bangs and explosions to, to die for. Swear to me on something that matters. For the opening episode, what we find out is, um, is that Amy has a big, huge secret from the Doctor, a big one, and um, it can potentially change her relationship with him forever. Um, and she's kind of in this really big moral dilemma. And, um, and it's really interesting because everybody's keeping secrets from each other in the TARDIS. Um, so it's a really different feel to last series due to that. My life in your hands. Amelia Bond. Oh, there's some um, really good stuff for Amy in, in the opening two-parter, some terrifying stuff, some stuff that is, I mean, messes with her mind. It's hopefully going to mess with the audience's mind. Um, really weird stuff that seems unexplainable but will be explained in the series. And what are the highlights are there for you in the rest of the series looking forward? Um, well, um, there was some um, press pictures um, of the pirate ship and I had the most fun ever filming that episode. It was the best. I got to do all these stunts and everything and, um, and normally they'd get a stunt person in to do it but I, um, the director wanted me to do it because then you'd be able to like, see my face while I did it. <laughs> and, um, and also I wanted to do it because it just looked really fun. Um, so I did some really cool stuff in that episode. and. Um, and yeah, there's some really, really massive revelations to look forward to, and I mean massive.